This week, I'm taking on a department store where customer service has vanished into thin air. There's no one around. My secret shoppers discover a miserable shopping experience. Smell won't hurt. But with staff demotivated by lacklustre leadership, <laughs> it's no wonder this business is in dire financial straits. £380,000 loss. They need to understand that great customer service... You don't look happy. ..is about knowing what the customers want and what they definitely don't want. I'm headed for the Suffolk seaside town of Lowestoft, but there's no time for donkey rides because I'm taking on my biggest shop yet. Godfrey's, a 28,000 square foot family run department store, so behind the times that some stock looks like it's been there longer than its owner, Jim. We still sell these things, look. Pedestal mats, amazing. We're like Woolworths on steroids. Jim may love a joke, but the customers are finding the service here no laughing matter. You're wandering around the store and trying to catch someone's eye. They'll either look straight past you or say, oh, someone will be with you in a minute. The customers come in, they know what they want, but the staff don't know what they want. They don't even know where it is on the stores. This is how much it is. Here's your change. No goodbye, no smile or anything. I want Lower Stoff to have the department store it deserves. And at the moment, Godfrey's ain't it. Today, we have extraordinary department stores in this country. Look at Selfridges, look at Liberties, look at Harrods, look at Harvey Nichols. Best, best in the world. Done well, a department store provides an invaluable service to local customers. They deliver incredible service, real product knowledge. That is absolutely fundamental. So, what's gone wrong in Lowestoft? With the nearest John Lewis almost 30 miles away, they should be making a mint. Sprawling across five connected buildings and two floors, Jim founded Godfrey's over 20 years ago. People would describe me as being a little bit of a cheeky chap sometimes. DVDs. He tries to stock anything he thinks the customers might want. Got the fireworks in here. Literally. This is our light ironmongery department. Anything. Fluffy slippers. Very nice. Look, quite nice, actually. Good afternoon, Godfrey. How can I help you? The store currently employs 40 staff. My name is Julie. I've worked here for 10 years now. You can do it if you wish to. I have an MBQ Level 1 and Level 2 in retail. My name's Steve. I am the furniture salesman. This is an awesome handmade gargoyle statue. How many have you sold? Uh, none so far. This is Scott. He's learning, he's keen. You wouldn't think to look at him, but he is. If I could describe my staff as a car, I think it'd be an Austin Allegro, you know. Whereas what I want from him is a Maser Maserati Quattroporte or something, you know. Last year, Jim handed over the day-to-day -day running of his eponymous emporium to his stepchildren. 36-year-old Laura is in charge of the finances. It was never my intention to work here at all. Was it yours? Did you...? Um, not really. And the creative beating heart of the business That's is it. now 34-year-old David. We haven't had any experience. Mm. We haven't been trained in business, have we? But Godfrey's has forgotten that for customers to have a good shopping experience, they need great customer service. As a result, the customers have deserted, and with them, the profits. We can't carry on sustaining these kind of losses because we're not making enough money. If things don't dramatically improve, Jim will have no choice but to close the store. Sitting here this morning, we're £516,000 in the red. And it's not just Godfrey's that might go under. We'll probably lose our house. I've got no qualifications, so it'll be very hard to get another job. Um, and that's my whole future wiped out. Jim and his stepkids are in a deep hole. If I'm going to help dig them out, I need to know what's going on. So I've arranged for my secret shoppers to go undercover to find out just how bad the service is. There's no one to ask for anything. Hello. Hello. It's like a ghost town. 
So you've got three departments, no one here. It looks like the fire alarm's gone off and they've left the building. There's just literally nobody on the shop floor. Instead of welcoming and greeting customers, the staff hide behind the cash desks. How long have we got there, Scotson? Two hours and seven minutes. Although they've found some uses for their idle hands. <laughs> when you do finally track down a staff member, it's not exactly service with a smile. Have you ever been there just going to go to the cake shop? Uh, if you're quick, yeah. Why would you go into that shop? Certainly not for the shopping experience. <laughs> a key part of good customer service is giving helpful and informed advice. But the staff at Godfrey's lack even basic knowledge about what they stock. You need to do flat pack. Right. No idea, right. I love it. No idea. That is the last thing you'd say to a customer. Hello, have you ever heard of Terrabin Dryer? No. Right, not no. 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 Sorry, no. no. Here we are. And there it is, on the shelf. No wonder they're losing money. If I had said to this team, I want you to go out of your way and not to make a sale, they'd have got 10 out of 10 for that. It's clear when it comes to customer service, some of the staff here are in need of a serious shake-up. But just when I thought shopping at Godfrey's couldn't be any less inviting... Why isn't this open? Oh, you've padlocked it. Oh. Uh, what? OK, which way do I get in? Oh. Oh, OK. See you later. New one on me. Why have they brought the windows up? It looks like an adult-only bookstore. That's astonishing. I don't think I've ever come across that in my whole career, where a retailer with a frontage like this blocks them up and closes the front door. And the seagulls agree with me, by the way. So I guess I've got to come up here, up round the back, where all the goods vans are unloading. Is this it? Someone killed a bunch of seagulls. So you have a frontage onto a very cute little street. You close it up, you send people up the back passage, literally, and you say, welcome to our store. My aim was to make a beeline for the sales team, but Godfrey's is a distracting assault on the senses. What are these cats? Oh, my God, they're hard as well. Rigor mortis is set in as well. The most annoying item is, I have to say, my bra. As soon as I'm able, I fling it off afar. I'm happier when my boobs are free and bouncing merrily. <laughs> Who's Bay Godfrey? I'm just reading the poetry. It's Jim's wife. <laughs> Do you sell many of those? Mm, a few, not many. Oh. How long have you been here? Ten years. I used to work in a furniture shop before I came. And um, it was targets and more, 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 and I just needed to get away from that. Do you have any targets here? No. No. What do you want It's got part real paper, part bit of grass, the twig sticking out of its arse. Hello. Hello. Is this your department? It is. Do you help choose the stuff? For it? I buy all of it, yeah. You buy all of it? It's the first time I've actually had the authority and the autonomy to actually buy my own products. I like furniture that says something. You know, yeah. And when people come in, they might not buy that, but they'll certainly go, wow, I didn't expect to see it. Has it sold? No. I didn't buy it to sell it. You know, I bought it to make a statement. Where do you get your inspiration from? Video games and tattoos. As you can see, I'm and that's... slightly inked. Where else have you got them? And they don't know me. <laughs> I don't know what the hell it is, the shop. I mean, it's not a department store. So, I've 
met the Indians. It's time to meet the Chiefs. Hello, you're Jim. Yes, I'm Jim. Nice to meet yep. you, Jim. Hello, I'm David. David. <laughs> Hello, I'm Laura. Hi, lovely to meet you, Laura. Right. What would make me come to this store? We're perceived to be the kind of shop you can come into and you stand a reasonable chance of getting what you want if you bother to come and find it and you can seek it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a pretty weak brief, isn't it? I mean, if you were writing it, I'm the store that if you haven't looked, found it anywhere else, you might find it, chances are. And what do you think your staff are like? Staff are good and then sometimes they're bad. Um, Told David, when, you sit on that wall when, when so we're... firmly on that wall. I want to show you this because I want you to feel what it's like to be a customer. Oh, dear. This <laughs> ain't going to be good, is it? Hello. Hello. Anyone here? There's no one around. I just think we've got enough staff. I don't know. I said the other day, I think sometimes they see customers as a bit of an inconvenience. That's harsh. I think we have got sufficient staff. I do think they hide. Yuck. There's no excuses there, really, yeah. What did you say, light soil? Yeah, we've got really light alkaline soil, actually. No idea, right. I mentioned Terrabin dryers. Hi, have you ever heard of Terrabin dryer? No. Not, no. No. Sorry, no. No. Cheers. I bet they go through and find it, yeah. <laughs> there we are. Dry is terrabine. A bit depressing, isn't it? <laughs> what I'm seeing is people who don't know what their job is, what their expectations are. Who does the staff training? We all do a bit of it, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, when someone new comes in, I might show them something on the tills. Um, when a new person comes in, I might show them something on the tills. It's hardly a training strategy. Well, th th we haven't got no sh training strategy in place. However, when... I don't know, honestly. I tell you what, I, I genuinely don't know how you get up and think that you're going to make money. So have both of you always worked in the store? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I've got a degree. I went off and did a degree at uni. It was never my intention to work here. Your business, your money, yeah. Yeah. Would you employ these two if they weren't related to you? That's a very, that's a very good question. <laughs> that's a very powerful question. Um, would I employ them? Possibly, no disrespect, but possibly not. Godfrey's of Lowestoft is a department store that's forgotten its customers and has no idea what local people want. Vegetable seeds she's after. Yeah, a little bit. No? sorry. The staff are unenthusiastic. And its 16 departments are jam-packed with random tat. Nice set of onions on your way in. It's no wonder the business is hemorrhaging cash. So you've gone from 17,000 lost in 2010, 2013, £380,000 loss. I mean, they, they are really big losses. Owner Jim can't keep bailing out his stepkids and the business. This place needs more than cash to turn things round. OK, so we're going to call a staff announcement. Okay. I think we've got to start off with a real open dialogue with the team to say we are in a business that's losing money and let's hear from them. Mm -hmm. OK, well, we've not really included our staff in our financial worries. Um, to my knowledge, the staff think we're OK. Got to be done, David. OK. Could all staff please meet in the library cafe in five minutes? Thank you. From the management down, there needs to be a change in culture and attitude at Godfrey's. And I think some of the staff need a massive wake-up call. Thank you, all of you. I know it's after work hours and I won't keep you very long. I'm going to hand you over to David, and David is going to talk to you about the finances, and I'd love to hear you respond to David, because the floor's yours, every bit as much as it is his. David, over to you. Um, well, firstly, the, the business isn't as, uh, as great as we all like to believe. Finances-wise, I'll let Laura discuss that, because, obviously, 
she's the finance lady, so uh, but she can, she can give you the figures on that. Textbook passing the buck there, David. I know you've probably seen over the few, last few years, trades kind of dwindled, and, and I think you're all intelligent people. You're all aware that the business isn't doing as well as it has done in the past. However, I don't think you realise how badly we've been doing over the last few years. Last year, we made a £380,000 loss. So it's worse than I think any of you actually understand. Well, obviously, we need the store to carry on, stay Sorry. open, because obviously that's all our jobs, isn't it? There is no training as such as staff training. Um, years ago, when I first came into the company, you used to get sent away on courses. I would like to know, why is it that we have directors on the company who knew nothing about this type of retail trade? Ouch. Thank you so much for staying behind tonight. Thank you. Well, at least the staff are now under no illusions. From a business that I thought was ticking along OK, Pretty shocking news, to be fair. I do worry, because I do have a mortgage um, to pay, um, just like probably half the staff here anyway. But uh, you ju we just got to be positive. The management at Godfrey's haven't given their staff any customer service training for years. How are you? Hi, David. Good bosses inspire their staff, but that's simply not happening. Currently, we have a team of the blobs who just go in and blob, and we need to change that. I've devised a simple customer service test. First, I want them to learn all about a new product, the Whiz Pro. We've got our four-way chopping blade that will pulverise like a massive steak in, like, about four or five seconds. Put that in, just like that. It's a lot to process, but not everyone looks eager to learn. Sometimes your facial expression looks like you're not enjoying something. Yeah. Oh, I'm just taking it all in. So you're listening face to me, I'm talking to you. You look, I can honestly think you're going to lay me out. <laughs> well, she, I, I, I think know, she's a bit intense, happy. a little intense sometimes, Person. and her face does light up when she smiles yeah. and talks, yeah. When you listen to me... <laughs> <laughs> I've got a smile on me then. Right, well, OK, get it cleaned up, looking fantastic, and we're going to take it out and you're going to sell it to the British public. <laughs> OK. People have been selling at Spitalfields Market for 350 years. It's the perfect place for Godfrey's sales force to practice their customer service. Anybody out there would like to come and have a look at our demonstration of our Wizard Pro? So just need a microphone. We'll just take the mirrors. Yeah, I only had it on that ear. You can't really hear yourself. Oops. Very good job here, and my take off your top. Say, if we want to shred a carrot. Julie actually has a real affinity with the product, but her whole body language is that quite nervy, and she looks depressed. She looks upset. Oh, it's gone wrong for me. What did you buy from this lady? <laughs> <laughs> At the moment. <laughs> Who wants to see a demonstration of this new food processor? You, sir? No? Can't get anyone to come here. He finds it excruciating, and I find it excruciating standing next to him. Uh, he's just deeply shy. <sighs> but he has to move on from that. Look up, get and... eye contact. Look, you've got some people. There we oh, are. Talk Chips to there. Them. Why is that going to benefit their life? Tell them that. This can benefit your life because it's quick and simple. OK, Steve, you ready? It is guaranteed for 25 years. Not five years, not 10 years, but 25 years. Pop that in there. That's a really impressive display. Steve has all the confidence that Julie Scott has. Yeah. I'm impressed. You'll be even more impressed when you see these awesome chips. My worry is all that confidence, all that selling technique will never sell that hideous furniture. Brilliant. Great form. There's potential here, but if they're to keep it up back at Godfrey's, they need to make learning about what they sell a part of their daily routine. At the start of the day, each of you pick a product and you present it to the other team members and you tell them exactly why that product's in your department and why it's going to enhance their lifestyle. And Julie? Okay. Smile. <laughs> so 
Staff product knowledge is fundamental to any business. So a week later, I'm back at Godfrey's to see how the sales staff are getting on with their homework. How's your product knowledge each morning showing each other? What, what have all the other departments been showing you? We've been quite busy, so we haven't had the time for that. What, to start the day and say, these are the new products, this is what... No, we haven't been doing that, no. You don't look happy. I've just been speaking with Scott, and he says that none of the product knowledge mornings have been going on where you're... Obviously, that was the last thing you told us. Yeah. I came in the first, the next day and wrote my training up, and I asked David if we could do it in the morning, and he said, no, we'll wait until Laura comes back. Why do we have to wait till Laura comes back? I don't know. No. Obviously, I want to, I'm, I'm ready to go. I've, I've done a, a complete training programme on the Indian wood. as to how to sell it and, and the features and benefits of it. Good and on you. Good on you. What sort of message does that say to the team? Can't be asked. I want you to feel that you are part of a team that's being really guided and supported. And are you feeling that? Are you feeling that from David? You don't have to answer. It's shocking. It's shocking. It's, it's retailing from the 1800s. They've been doing their product knowledge, but they haven't been led by anyone to say, here's the time, morning, we're on the right. shop floor, where's the best sellers? Okay. You know, talk us through that. Why? I have been struggling with time, and Jim has been down, and me and Jim have both been discussing... Just to stop the struggling with time, what is it? What is it that's stopping you doing what's imperative to this business? Just catching up with stuff, really. I'm not shirking my responsibility. Do you know what? It's not even about shirking responsibility. It's about whether you will lead that team to make it happen. I will. I will and inspire definitely. them. I will. I, I will definitely do that, and I will definitely lead that. Where's Jim, by the way? Um, he's on call. Right, because I think we'll go and see him. Okay. I want to have a real serious discussion on this. With the problems at Godfrey's running far deeper than the shop floor, the whole clan have agreed to gather at Jim's house, where he lives with his wife and erotic scribe, Faye, Laura and David's mum. Oh, Faye, nice, to meet, nice to meet you. I've read your saucy poetry, now I'll meet you in person. Woo! <laughs> I felt really kind of flattened by the fact that the stuff that we went through hasn't started to happen in the business, the product knowledge, the team meeting. I can respond to that. I think it's, it's all a bit too quick and a bit too fresh for us. So it's not, a, it's not a reluctance on our part to take it up, it's just merely timing. Faye, how's it been for you seeing that they're losing this money? I mean... It's been difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, at the end of the day, the two kids have left to get on with it. Yeah. I think what we need to do is what are the clear roles and responsibilities? Who's going to be general manager? Who oversees buying? I mean, as much as I really like Steve, brilliant salesman, but is it the right furniture? No, I don't think it is. Right. No. You are up in the office doing accounts. You've got nearly 90% of buying decisions at home are done by women. This is what I want. I want a focus, if you know what I mean. I want a clear role. How many days do you do a week? I do Monday and Tuesday, a full day, and then the other's half day. So. I mean, I think it would be really important that we look at that. And even sitting around the table and discussing it is something that we've never really properly done in depth get before. The, the words in, do you, sometimes? I think I'm about as popular as a pork chop at a bar mitzvah here at the moment. I, no, I, I, you know what, think... you know what, Jim? Anyway, stop joking. This is make or break time. Unless we focus and structure this business properly with real, clear roles and responsibilities, you might as well close the shop, cut your losses and say, Godfrey's no more. I'm taking on my biggest shop yet. Godfrey's, a lowest off department store where the customers have departed. Lou of the Year Awards 2006. The management team don't understand their roles and are failing to lead. And the staff here are either demotivated or simply not listening to their customers. Recently put in charge of selecting the stock for his furniture department, Steve seems to be ignoring his mainly middle class customers and instead is selling to Middle Earth. He's something different. He's something that you just would not expect to see in, in any store, really. <laughs> Steve must start thinking more about what his customers want. It's all about inspiring people. I must have that cushion. Oh, that table's divine. 
And so you have to create this style that's led by a team of people who totally understand how people want to live today. I want to see what Steve considers inspirational home living. Hi, Steve. Good nice morning, to Mary. See you. Welcome to my house. I can't see you answering that. I do answer that quite regularly. This is our living space. This is where we spend most of our time. Do you sit with this lot looking down your neck when yeah, you're watching TV? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you're mad. I am slightly mad, yes, yeah, but, but you know, that's the childlike part of me. And that comes through in my purchasing, I'm afraid, you know, I can't help it. I know you can't help it. <laughs> and thereby lies the issue. I think you have to really stop letting this affect what you buy. I disagree because I think what I've tried to achieve at Godfrey's is to create a balance between the normal furniture and the funky stuff with it. What you're missing here, and is a big thing, is there aren't many Steves walking around. No. There aren't many houses like this. I think you're an extraordinary salesman. Even talking me through this, it comes from there. Mm. And I want you to be able to sell stuff from there mm. that ain't like this. Mm. I agree with her that I, maybe I do have to tone some of the items down, but I've got years of experience behind me and I do know what people like and I know what lower stuff likes. Gargoyles are not going anywhere. I will fight her hammer and tongs if she asks me to get rid of them. Godfrey's is going to win the locals back. I need Steve and his colleagues to understand what will really inspire their customers. Nice to see you. I've invited him and the team to the Conrad shop, a store that's been leading the way in homeware for over three decades. What do you feel when you come in here? It makes me want to go off and have a look there. Makes you want to know what's over there and yeah. what's over there. Each product here has earned its place on the shelf. Getting all the tap that we have, we actually do a lot of similar stuff. Yeah. And we need to... Yeah, but you, it just gets lost in a bag of old rubbish. That's the sad thing. Right. Giuseppe? This is Laura. For head personal shopper Giuseppe, great customer service is about one key thing. The trick to me is to listen to what the customer wants and to be as much as possible on the shop floor. If you don't give beautiful guided customer service, they'll just buy on the internet. I want Steve and Julie to really understand what it means to listen. Giuseppe has kindly agreed to let them practice on one of his loyal customers. I am looking for a present for my brother. He's in his mid-40s and he's recently moved out to Madagascar. Lufa? Maybe not. Think about the men in your life. Oh, I ain't got any not. men in my life. Haven't you got any men in your no, life? No. I'm divorced and I don't want any more men. Think about some sort of man bag. How are you getting on, Julie? I've got to, I've, I thought the clocks were quite nice. Yeah, they're lovely. They're quite modern. But it's the customer's style that really matters. Um, I picked this, the alarm clock because I thought if he's got a job, if he's working, then he obviously need to get up mm. in the morning. The clock's quite a useful idea, but... It's not actually. I don't think it's his kind of style. Okay. Dave. Yeah. Every man that goes abroad, me especially, mm. I, I, I have to have my things that clip my nasal hair and all the rest of it, so it's, oh. uh, <laughs> it's, 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 very, it's, it's absolutely essential. He's going to need a decent-sized man bag that folds flat so he can go yeah. nicely in all luggage. Yeah, I do actually really like that. That's his kind of style. Mm. This is I the piece that I probably is, I would, I would have for. gone for something very similar. Well yeah. done. I'm impressed. Steve can get into the head of the customer and not a gargoyle in sight. It's a steep learning curve. There's so much that we can learn, so much that we can take back to Godfrey's and, 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 and change. Great home stores deliver great service, but also provide an inspiring environment for customers to shop in with beautiful layouts and products chosen with care definitely encourage us to up our game. You know, if we can do a little bit of it, well, I think we could do really well now. Laura and David are finally getting it, and I believe with them now on board, Godfrey's can be the department store Lowestoff is crying out for. Unfortunately, not everyone sees it the same way. No disrespect, but it's a little bit too sort of 
Ponzi for me. Too highfalutin. Not, not altogether. I, I do. I, I, I can. Well, I, I think people love a big load of old mess. They rummage through and they well, pick things up. Well, that's good, because that's what you got. Jim's old school. He thinks it's all a little bit too woolly and fluffy and girly, as it, he might put it, whereas it's modern. It's, it's the way retail has gone. We need him to just relax and let us run this place the way it should be run. They're not going to get anything past me without coming through me, and I'm not going to pour too much more into that business cash-wise. David and Laura must persuade their reluctant stepdad to trust them not to waste his hard-earned money. So I've invited them all to my agency to convince him to take the plunge. First up, building good relationships with customers, even when they aren't in the store. And an idea to reward Godfrey's loyal customers whilst attracting new ones who might have forgotten about the place. Do you use social media? We did have Twitter, but um, the guy who done that has left now. So what you've got to get used to is really having this as an intrinsic part of your business. I am going to photograph myself. You take a product selfie. Looking good, aren't I? Tweet hashtag Godfrey's and hey presto, it printed out in store. So there's me, Godfrey's, hashtag, I go up on your pin board. And then you send them a Twitter back saying that they've got a 10% discount. It makes us a destination like that store we went to today. It's somewhere that perhaps people will go out of their way to come and visit. Next, I want to tackle the products Godfrey's is offering its customers and its shopping environment. So, we're going to start to have a proper frontage to this business. The first thing I want to do is open up those dreadful windows. Wow. That's great. <laughs> so you walk in through the front door. It's a massive shop, so as a starting point, I want them to transform Steve's furniture section into a home lifestyle department. I love that. Now, in the long run, I think you should get rid of all that paint section and all your plumbing bits. On the tools and the eyemongery bits? And yeah, all I think they should go. Oh, right, OK, blimey, OK. Ooh. That's a bit scary, that is. It don't really sit well with me, some of that. It, I find it a little bit intimidating, and it's not me. It's just basically not me. I reckon to get this to a decent level, you're probably looking at about another 15,000. Are you prepared to go to him and ask him for 15,000? Jim. Take a seat. Mary has estimated that we need about 15 grand. Right, well, look, I would say to you, it's not just about the money. I'm concerned about jettisoning some of the product that we've got in there now, whether we can relocate it, stick it out in the store and create a new trade counter somewhere with all the widgets no. somewhere else, no. chuffed in the corner. No. Can I just, just stop this? What they're saying to you is, Jim, we want to run this business. I hear what you say, but are you going to put your house on the line to underpin the business if it starts falling over? It won't be you, it'll be me again, won't it? I'm just worried that I'm going to give him 15, 20 grand and it's going to be frittered away on fluffy, foamy little projects and so on and so forth. I'm slightly disappointed that he hasn't got the faith in us that I thought he would have. Mm. I've been shown something that we can become and I don't want it to stay how it is. If Jim doesn't come up with the money, I don't think I'll stay. I would definitely think about going. When I first arrived in Lowestoft, Godfrey's was a struggling department store that looked more like a jumble sale and the customer service was virtually non-existent. My plan now is to give Godfrey's a new identity as a destination home store and with brother and sister managers David and Laura finally stepping up to the plate, I think they might just make this work. But can they persuade Mr Godfrey's himself, their stepdad Jim, to invest another 15 grand? You've just got to let us do it, haven't you? I mean, we, we will do it, we can do it. You know we can, really. 
Just, just I haven't just got to let you do it. I mean, I, I, that's ridiculous. I haven't just got to let you do it. I mean, I, I need a commitment from you that you are going to give me oh. on this business 100% and carry this through. You know we do. Yeah, and I, I'm a bit disappointed that you don't think we will because I was hoping that you would see our enthusiasm yesterday and that you could see that we really wanted to do this. I think David and Laura do lack that little extra fire in the belly. But maybe, again, it's me. And maybe I'm the old dinosaur, and maybe I need to be sort of put out of grass or whatever it is. Maybe I should just move over and let these young uns get on with it. OK. I don't want to stand in your way at all, um, and I think we've got to give it a thumbs up. We've got to agree to do it, OK? Yep. Yeah. Done. Now it's up to Laura and David to show they can take charge, motivate their team. What we really want is everybody talking to customers. If somebody's looking at something, go to them, pick it up for them. You know, I want all of us to be enthusiastic about the things that we're selling. Come on, Mary, I'm just going to take you to your new home. And open up those bloody windows. It feels good to be putting this right. It pains me to say it, but I don't know what we were thinking. After five days of hard graft, Godfrey's reinvention is almost complete. Tomorrow is the grand reopening, and with the help of my team, the staff are working overtime. But just when the bosses looked like they were taking charge... <laughs> yeah, we've got to go. I know, we've got to go uh, back to Mum's for tea. She's cooking some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a bit guilty about jumping ship. Oh, completely. No, we're not yes. jumping ship. It's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Jim's wife has cooked something and, you know, they've all got down tools and they've all got to go, you know, and that, that shouldn't be the way. They could have said no. They could have said no and stayed with us. In just under an hour, a new-look Godfrey's will fling open its front doors to the locals of Lowestoft. feels so much cooler and professional. Not every bit of toot and tat rammed in the windows, just looking lovely. Good morning. Hey. Wow, that's a difference, isn't it? You've got a home shop. Wow, that's a completely different business, isn't it? Looking good, isn't it? It's really looking good, really looking good. It's not just the shop that's got organised. The bosses seem to have finally figured out their roles too. You're going to be doing the buying, whereas <laughs> I'll be doing like the figures and bits and bobs like that. I'll, I'll be Management doing... Management of the business? Yeah, mm. absolutely. How many days a week are you going to I'm do? I'm going to do five days a week. I'm going to be um, here full time. And Saturdays as well, yeah. Do you want to be here five yes, days a week? Yes, I do now. I didn't before. <laughs> It seems David and Laura are ready to motivate and train their staff, but there's one bone I still want to pick. Did you two nip off and have supper in the middle of it all when everyone else was working? A little bit of mm-mm-mm, mm, yeah. did you? Yeah. Did you? Well, it was only because Mum cooked us dinner. Can I say that I wasn't happy about going? But well, neither of us time. was, really. The truth is that you do need to lead from the yeah, front. absolutely. Yeah. You will dictate and manage your time. That now has to move away from Jim. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to treat Jim as the owner, mm -hmm. the chairman, and then hopefully one day you might go, we'd like this business. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, that's what we aim for, yeah. isn't it? Godfrey's is ready for its customers, but it seems that Steve has taken my style tips a step too far. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Who got you to do that? <laughs> you naughty boy. You can open the doors to everybody. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah, we're ready. Good morning. <laughs> it's not only Godfrey's appearance that has changed. The staff now seem engaged and are offering real customer service. Thirty-six ninety-nine, please. Thank you. Much. Thanks for coming today. But what do the locals make of it? The staff are now really friendly and I think really pleased that the store's taking on this new edge. I think the customer service has improved. I think it's very good and I think the staff look very good in their new uniforms. Is it somewhere you'd come and look again in the future? Oh, goodness, yes. And Julie is smiling. <laughs> oh, 
Does it feel like the kind of place where you would buy from? Definitely, definitely. I like the minimalistic look to yeah. it. Really, really what about nice. the front of the store? Amazing. As soon as I walked around the corner, that was amazing, because you'd look in the windows again. <laughs> Just even walking out the front door to check your windows feels instantly that we're in a professional business. Yeah. These chairs, you know, they're just beautiful, you know, and, and this washed furniture. I, I'd looked at that weeks ago and disregarded it, you know, but I can see now the, the error of my ways. I now look at things with fresh eyes. You really feel this, don't you? I do, yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah. and when you're doing your buy in future, um, what will you be thinking? Pro probably not so many gargoyles. That's what I like to hear. Launch days are one thing, but will Godfrey's be able to keep up the high standards? Unbeknown to the staff, a week later, I sent back in my secret shoppers. And today, I'm going to show Laura, David and Jim what they found. So let's look at them. Yes. This is Julie. Just over a month ago, Julie looked like she wanted to be anywhere but the shop floor. Is it? This all got opened out up um, like this on Friday yeah. last week. Friday? Oh. Yeah. Must be nice for the staff. That is nice, yeah. that is nice, because that's, that's just making the shop look more modern, yeah. new, and giving us a new way of looking at things yeah. now. Yeah. It's nice to be nice. happy in your work, isn't well, it? Well, you've got to, really, because yeah. yeah. I'm here yeah. most of my life, so... <laughs> <laughs> She's got a new life about her, yeah. and she, she, I think she actually enjoys coming into work. Right, Scott. When I first saw Scott, he had no idea about what he was selling and seemed totally disinterested. The um, lavender you've got over right there, a growing season, presumably. Special handy book for this. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> God bless him. Flowering time is from July to September. I think this is the sort of the time where the frost can start yeah. affecting. Yeah. Or well, the water freezes and the roots don't get their nutrients. Yeah. Never heard him talk. So I thought that was pretty mm. impressive, you know. Impressive. And I have to say with you, Jim, you did think that this was all going to be a bit poncy. It sits not easy with me now because I've seen the final result. Well, so poncy is good. Um. Yeah, Ponzi, Ponzi can be good. Ponzi's good. Yeah. To a point. As for Laura and David, I'm amazed to see they're already showing ambition to lead their business forward by rolling out the home store concept to the first floor. These are lovely. When did you get these? Yeah, these are our new products. Yeah, we've already sold some. That is really, really lovely. I can't believe that we've managed to do this. What I've loved about this is we set the blueprint and they have done all of this on their own and done that so well. But not everything <laughs> has changed. There's one corner of Godfrey's that shall remain forever, Jim. Oh, <laughs> they are disgusting! <laughs> no way. They're wine bottle holders. Julie, you weren't lying back in a negligee with a bottle of wine in that going, <laughs> that is just disgusting. My time in Lowestoft has come to an end. Steve, you see? I think you're a little star. I really, really do. I really do. I do. I'm proud of you. Oh, I'm proud of you. I really am. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> I don't I want you I want you smiling. Oh look at it. Did you love it? <laughs> Did you love it? I know it's lovely experience. Oh, will you pass that experience on to everyone else? Right? Yeah. <laughs> bye bye, mate. Look, I bet you're too shy to give me a cuddle. Like. I'll give you a cuddle, don't you? And worry. well done on your knowledge. It was okay. I don't think I've ever seen a turnaround so deep and meaningful in a team of people. Extraordinary. I mean, I have every faith in David and Laura to take this business forward. I really do. The last thing I heard while I was coming down, this woman came in and said, oh, this is the Harrods of Lower Stuff. Excellent. How brilliant. We know we're better than them. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> see you guys.
Next time, I'm taking on a family-run fashion boutique where the customer is always wrong. Ah, shit. You're making me do things wrong. Are you trying to sound an idiot? Babe, I never called you that. You just called yourself. You're not going to get your money back. It's like going into a war zone. Can this lot ever learn to give customers the service they deserve? I had a vision of, of what I wanted my boutique to be like, and it's not.